Venkatesh Rao is one of the deepest thinkers on the art of consulting, and he has a deep appreciation for the history of the field, including firms like McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. We recently explored this in a conversation around his new book, The Art of Gig, which shares his own philosophies around the art of consulting and how he's been influenced by the history of the industry and what it all means for the future of consulting. I thought he did a great job talking about how the big firms help shape a leveling up of business thinking across the business world from the 1970s and 80s especially, but in more recent days have sort of lost their groove. And we talk about why the future of consulting might look more like weird indie consultants than the big firms we've grown to look up to for new ideas. Let's jump to the conversation and we'll take a look at how we both see the current and future of the state of consulting. You have a really good understanding of the big consulting firms. Um, probably better than like most of my former colleagues. Um, <laughs> why, why do you think understanding big, con big consulting is so important for indies? Which I, I think you're spot on on this. So, uh, I, I mean, you have to give the devils their due. They pioneered this whole thing, right? Uh, I really love this uh, book, Lords of Strategy, which I cite like a couple of points in the book. Uh, by Walter Kuchel, uh, and uh, he, he talks about the history of how strategy consulting in particular came out of like the uh, 1970s Japanese competition oil shocks era and companies had to get out from being like um, dull unimaginative just uh, plow along in a straight line type of like uh, old school managed companies to companies that actually think strategically and steer and yeah I think um, BCG Bain uh, McKinsey, um, Harvard Business School, for about 15, 20 years, they were doing like some serious, real hard thinking and actually injecting some really solid intellectual DNA into kind of a stupid business sector. Like I, I like to think of like the overall IQ of the business world as uh, going through cycles. Like the business world used to be kind of dumb before the Robert Baron era. So, and then it had a period of like, rapid IQ increase in like 1870s to maybe 1920s. Then after uh, the New Deal and the Roosevelt era in, in the US, it kind of got stupid for a few decades. Um, you can actually go back when you see the Reagan Thatcher era start. Um, and this was, I think, uh, I forget where I read it, but in the Thatcher uh, UK, industrial leaders were, were actually scared of the free market. They were so used to like the protectionist world that many of them complained to market uh, Margaret Thatcher about like how are we going to survive blah 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 and today we are at the other end of the extreme uh, of the pendulum uh, pendulum swing where they're like extremely overconfident about their ability to survive and like do good in the Hobbesian uh, marketplace right um, so uh, you can think of this as like IQ and confidence sort of like um, cycling uh, through and uh, I kind of like uh, went off on a, a bunny trail here but the point is the reason uh, big consulting was valuable during its uh, heyday was it really leveled up the IQ of the business world by about, I, I would say 20 to 30 IQ points. Like people were starting to think critically and so forth. Then of course it got institutionalized, captured, cronyist, all the problems you and I have talked about. Uh, and it's also in um, both our books. Um, I, I think it's like the end of a cycle and uh, the business world, I think, is honestly getting stupider again. So it needs a fresh injection of uh, intelligence. And yeah, we have to plumb new sources of intelligence. But yeah, for a while there, the consulting world was worth learning from. And yeah, I consciously tried to learn from how they operate. Yeah, one thing that stood out in Lords of Strategy was how BCG uh, Bruce Henderson is like, let's split our team into competing tribes and we're just going to like see who can create the best firm. <laughs> and it's a crazy experiment. Like no big firm would do this now. And Bill, I think Bill Bain um, was basically like, we came up with a better net model. Now we're taking all the consultants and starting our own firm. Um, and yeah, it's just hard to imagine that kind of um, boldness in today's world. And yeah, I dug into this, the explosion of ideas in the late 60s to the early 80s was just really impressive. Like you probably would have been 
someone that would have been in that world in that time period. Oh, um, yeah. They had Absolutely. a lot of weirdos. <laughs> And also, there was no other option for people like us, if you think right. about it. There wasn't the internet, there wasn't this option to like just create a random independent thing. Like, if you read uh, uh, advice on starting your own small business from the 80s or 90s, like the e myth, uh, Michael Gerber's book, you get this sense that this is fundamentally uh, um, mental models from an era where the environment was way more hostile to um, this kind of path. Uh, uh, but um, just to point on your uh, uh, Bruce Anderson internal competition, uh, I actually thought about that and it strikes me that that kind of like competitive boldness like create a Darwinian subculture. Uh, it's kind of more common in companies now, but it's always been the preserve of like one level of abstraction higher. Like, you know, government procurement works that way. Like fighter aircraft are usually uh, you order one prototype from Boeing, one from Lockheed, you call them X and Y, there's a fly off and then the winner uh, gets the big contract, right? Uh, but it's interesting to reflect on what happens to such apparently uh, honest competitions, like DARPA grand challenges are, are similar. They tend to get captured by the competitors. Like uh, what happens is at some point Boeing and Lockheed get big enough that they can basically rig the competition. So even though it looks like an X versus Y fly off, Everybody knows that the Joint Strike Fighter contract is going to like unfold a certain way based on like who knows which senators and where the jobs are being built. And I think uh, uh, the DARPA grand challenges are better, but they're also sort of uh, vulnerable to this kind of capture. Uh, so I think actually the best kind of like um, positive Dar Darwinism, so to speak, I don't want to like uh, 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 condone social Darwinism, but the indie consulting sector really is like a healthy kind of like tryout, like a thousand people trying out a thousand different experiments and uh, learning from each other.